Good morning, everyone. Um, well, I'm here to talk about celebrities today. <laughs> kind of a change from uh, the American Red Cross, but wow, that presentation really blew me away. Um, to kick it off, I want to talk to you a little bit about the top 10 most followed people on Twitter. Number one, Lady Gaga. Number two, Justin Bieber. Number three, Britney Spears. Number four, the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Number five, Kim Kardashian, and we'll get back to her in a few minutes. Number six, Ashton Kutcher. Number seven, Ellen DeGeneres. Number eight, Katy Perry. Number nine, Taylor Swift. Number 10, Oprah Winfrey. Uh, going to the top 20, seven of the next 10 are also celebrities. And at number 20, you have CNN. So needless to say, social media and celebrity go hand in hand. How many of you follow entertainment news online? Probably about half of you, okay, you're my people. Um, <laughs> so I want to talk to you a little bit about Access Hollywood and how a brand like ours has integrated social media into our business model. Um, some of you might not know Access Hollywood from the other entertainment news magazine shows that are out there. We're the ones with Billy Bush <laughs> and Maria Menounos and Tony Potts and Sean Robinson. Um, we actually are a part of NBC News. Um, some people might not know that. Those other shows are not part of the news division, but Access Hollywood is. So we follow NBC News standards and practices. I used to work uh, in New York for the Today Show. The same standards and practices that the Today Show follows, Access Hollywood follows in presenting and reporting on entertainment news. Our website, which we started to get serious about in about 2006, gets an average of about 3 million uniques a month. Um, we've been as high in the past year as 6.9 million uniques. Um, but we do have, we are a leader in our field of the entertainment news magazine shows. We can combine all the traffic of Entertainment Tonight, the Insider Extra, and Inside Edition, and we'd still have more unique users a month than all of them put together. Which is surprising considering Entertainment Tonight has five times the on-air traffic that Access Hollywood has. They've been around for 30 years. They're sort of an institution. We've been around for about 15 years as a show. Um, so, of, about five, six years ago, there was really a rise in entertainment news reporting online. Uh, sort of a game changer, I guess you could say, with the rise of sites like PrezHilton.com, which many of you probably have heard of, and uh, a site I helped found in 2005 called TMZ.com. Um, it really swung the pendulum of entertainment celebrity news reporting from a very controlled manner, which was sort of the way we were doing things uh, previous to the celebrity news revolution, to a no holds barred sort of revolution in reporting on entertainment and celebrities. Um, so, a, a brand like ours, we're a syndicated television show. So, our show feeds out at about 1 p.m. Pacific time every day, so that it can start airing in the East Coast markets at about 4 or 4.30 p.m. Um, and, and so, when you have a syndicated model like that, where we air at different times in different markets, by the time our show makes it to air in a lot of markets, the entertainment news is old. Um, so we realized that you know being in the online sector was a game changer for us. We had to be there, and like as I said before, prior to six years, five six years ago, we weren't there. And then about two years ago, social media became a crucial component of our game plan. We realized we weren't going to survive without being on Facebook, being on Twitter, and getting all of our reporting out in real time because we are in a cutthroat field. Um, but for us, for Access Hollywood, it's always more important to be right than to be first. We want to be first as much as possible, um, but you know, a, a site like TMZ, which you, know, you may know are oftentimes the first to report big news, such as Michael Jackson's death, sometimes they get it wrong. I remember a couple years ago they reported Jay-Z died in a plane crash. Well, Jay-Z's alive. <laughs> um, you know, another entertainment news show that we're competitive with I remember a couple years ago, reported, three years ago actually, reported that Angelina Jolie had her twins two months before she gave birth. Okay. <laughs> they still haven't taken that article down from their website. <laughs> um, so how does Access Hollywood really, really engage and use social media? I'm um, getting back to the point of, of why we're here today. It truly helps us, like my executive producer Rob Silverstein said, said engage our viewers and foster conversation to really take the temperature of what's important out there in the field of entertainment news. Oftentimes, I'll get in the morning and Rob will ask me, are, are people talking about 
this or that in Twitter. The Lady Gaga thing was a perfect example. Are people talking about how much her new song sounds like Madonna's Express Yourself? And when I said yes, look at how much this is trending, he led the show with it. So it's a real good temperature gauge, which has been amazing. Um, we have a very interactive show. We have a segment in our show called The Age Nation, which airs anywhere from two to five times a week. Age Nation is a segment, usually airs in the third block of our show, where we gauge our audience using polls. You know, what does the Age Nation think? Does Lady Gaga's song sound too much like Madonna? 67% of you said yes. Um, so it's a way to get really instant feedback on what's trending out there in the entertainment news world. Um, so, moreover, Twitter really helps us, Twitter and Facebook, I should say, because Facebook is actually a higher refer for us than Twitter at this point. And I'll get into some PowerPoint slides in a second about that. It's a journalist's ultimate tool. Um, sometimes it's hard to remember how we did journalism without the internet, and now it's becoming increasingly more hard to realize how we do journalism without social media. Um, it's really easy to find news. I'd say I probably get about, learn about 30% of the news from Twitter now, not from the AP wires, which is traditionally how we'd learn something was breaking. I'm on Twitter and Facebook all night long. I think it's all day long. You know what? <laughs> all night long, too. Um, looking at what gets posted, because our, what we do is really 24 7 at this point, entertainment celebrity news. Can't tell you the number of times I've been woken up at 3 in the morning and Lindsay Lohan's. And something else happened. Um, she's a fun one. Um, but moreover, and, and this is a really interesting point for me, um, is how does a show like, uh, like Access Hollywood, like our show, um, react to more important things that are happening in the world? A perfect example is everything that's happening in Egypt. When the lead story of the day, everywhere in America, or in the world for that matter, is Egypt, how do we report on Egypt? Well, the answer is we turn to Twitter and we look at how celebrities are talking about the situation in Egypt. Uh, it was a story we did just a few weeks ago. Just type in hashtag Egypt, find all the celebrities whose feeds we're regularly following, and we have a news story that we can lead the show with. Um, so when tragedies happening, when big, big news is happening in the world, we gauge celebrities' reactions and create journalism and stories out of that. Um, the, the, the tricky thing um, in relying on social media is sorting through basically all the crap that's out there. Uh, you know, I had mentioned the, the Jay-Z is dead story before. Um, I don't think a week goes by without a different urban myth about a celebrity's death. Some of you have probably heard about that, like um, Tom Cruise got in a motor accident instead, or Eddie Murphy died in a car crash. The one that's been coming up a lot recently is Jeff Goldblum died in a hand gliding accident in New Zealand. Um, <laughs> Just about every week I get one of those stories. And of course we call the publicists and say, is this true? And they say, no, you're being ridiculous. But we call anyway. Um, Twitter and Facebook have also really helped us in brand building. Um, and it also has helped us, as I mentioned a little bit briefly before, as a traffic building tool. Um, we talked a little bit about how Polly D was our correspondent at the Grammys the weekend before last. Well, we tapped into Polly D. For those of you who don't know who that is, he's a member of the Jersey Shore cast. It's a popular reality show on MTV. Um, not my cup of tea personally, but we do a lot of reporting on them. And they're very popular. These kids, the Snookies and the Situations, they're, uh, they're very followed. Um, so our top traffic refer in, on Grammy night, in the afternoon, aftermath of Grammys the next day, was our links that we, Tiny URL, sent to Polly D, and he retweeted them. And that's where all the traffic came back for us on Grammy Day, um, which is a change from how things were a few years ago. Um, but there's so much to sort through. People can get Grammy news anywhere. People were talking about the Aretha Franklin tribute, Lady Gaga's performance, and, and as soon as it aired. So by the time Access Hollywood airs, again, Monday night at 7 p.m. in most markets, you know, what happened Sunday night was completely old and, and obsolete. Um, there also seems to be um, a, a hot celebrity at all times. Um, a few years ago, anything we put up on Britney Spears would get huge traffic. Um, uh, for SEO purposes, I would create stories out of nothing about Britney Spears. That'd be true, but <laughs> I'd do anything to get the words Britney Spears on my website. Well, she went a little crazy in 2007 and uh, sort of went out of the limelight for a little while. Um, and then the new thing became the Twilight Kids. Um, 
couldn't get enough of Twilight, and they still remain a huge traffic getter for us. 